Uh, I also loaded up Final Cut Pro and did a bunch of tests on it earlier. And what we'll do real quick here is load up a little 4K video I've been playing with in Final Cut Pro. This is just on the desktop here. I've got a bunch of 4K 60 video files loaded in. Two of them are HDR videos shot on the iPhone 12 Pro. So I have a filter on it right now to convert that HDR to SDR video. So you can see how blown out it gets when I turn that filter off. And this is not pre-rendered here. So if you look at these little dots here at the top of the timeline, uh, you'll see that it's just running uh, basically in real time here to do that color grading. And what we can do in addition to that is maybe drop in a little transition here. So we'll do that. And if we run that, you can see that's running nice and smooth. It was a little bit sluggish there when it ran. And the reason why it's just a little bit sluggish is that I have it on the better quality mode here. But as you can see, without any rendering, we're able to really work with this quite nicely. Again, a few drop frames there with that movement, but not bad at all. I can then maybe apply another filter here. Maybe we'll drop in this vintage thing here and see how that looks. Uh, but overall, editing 4K 60 video on this fanless laptop is going pretty nicely here. And we've seen similar performance out of this processor uh, series or family on the iPad Pro uh, because that one was able to edit 4K video pretty effortlessly. And now we're looking at more advanced tools being available to us on the Mac side. Uh, namely Final Cut Pro. I've been really impressed with the Final Cut Pro performance. Now typically the videos I edit here on the channel are at 1080p at 30 frames per second and what was immediately noticeable to me was just how much zippier things felt here on this MacBook Air versus my uh, MacBook Pro that I've been using for a couple of years now. It really does feel a lot quicker. And some other stuff is actually a lot faster too because right now my editor is off-site due to the pandemic. So what I usually do is take the raw files here, which are ProRes files, and convert them into something smaller that I can send to him over the internet. So what we do is we transcode these videos into proxy files and we take about 20 to 25 gigabytes of raw footage and convert it down into proxies that are much smaller. And typically I'm sending him a package that's about 500 to 800 megabytes. It's a lot faster to send them that than 25 gigabytes. And then he edits the file and sends it back to me. And it's a really good workflow that's worked great for us. So I was curious to see how fast the MacBook Air here could transcode those files over to the proxy format versus a Mac Mini that we have here in the studio. That's the one that my editor typically uses when he's here in the studio with us. It's a six core i7, an 8700B that we bought about a year or two ago. And you can see the head to head test here running that we did on a live stream the other day. So the MacBook Air is on the left and it's gonna finish transcoding all of those files over in about two minutes and 14 seconds. You can see it wrapping up right there. And then on the right is the screen grab from the Mac Mini with that i7 chip, the six core chip. And that one took a bit longer. It didn't finish up until about three minutes and 32 seconds in that little test that we ran, which was pretty remarkable actually. So this was faster than that six core Intel chip from just a year or two ago. And then what we did is we rendered out the project to the video format that I upload to YouTube. And for a few minutes, the MacBook Air here was ahead of the Intel on that processing. But because this is a fanless device and the only way it can cool itself down is by slowing down, they ended up processing that video at a, almost exactly the same amount of time, about six minutes and 10 seconds. So I think if I had the MacBook Pro 13 or the new Mac Mini with the M1 processor, we would have seen that export go a lot quicker. And I think that's the big difference here between the MacBook Air and the Pro. You'll get really good bursty performance out of this thing, like the proxy rendering we just did, but for a longer term, high duration, high stress kind of processing, the devices with active cooling are going to be faster. So I think if that's the kind of work that you're doing, a lot of sustained uh, kind of processing, you'll want to go with the MacBook Pro for a laptop or the Mac Mini on the desktop side. Now, another fun little benchmark we run with Final Cut Pro here is the Bruce X benchmark. And this is just a real simple little Final Cut Pro project that renders out a 5K video but it really works your system's GPU because there's a ton of effects and transitions and titles going on. And if you have a computer without a GPU, it takes a while for it to render. So the 
prior version of the MacBook Air here, the Intel one that we reviewed about two years ago, uh, took about three minutes to render out that very short file. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done here. Uh, so really quick little file, three minutes on the old one. This one did it in 18 seconds. Isn't that remarkable? And what was also interesting is that we often hook up an external GPU to the Mac Mini over there. And when that GPU is attached, it's an RX 580, uh, the Mac Mini will render it out with the GPU in 20 seconds. So that's not you know, the most recent modern AMD GPU, but it's still pretty crazy to see that kind of graphical performance out of a single chip solution like this little computer here. And that's just the kind of performance that we're seeing out of this. This channel is brought to you by the LAN.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Jim Peter, Tom Albrecht, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.